Get out of there, Buster. Alrighty, Bob, welcome back to the jungle. I'm gonna be playing Viego versus Ivern. And honestly, the worst team comp you could ever play Viego into, so hopefully I can show you an example of how you operate when you're in a bad matchup. Because in this case, we're against Enchanter, Control Mage, basically Control Mage bot lane. So, for once in our life, we'll be pathing topside, as Camille is one of the only lanes I can gank. Wish me luck. The basics remain true, though. We want to farm most of our camps, and then attack the enemy where they're weak. So where that Camille and, honestly, the Ivern, if I can find him in the river, would be fine targets. For the runes, we got Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Coop, and then Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. These will give us our damage and our utility, as well as some of our survivability. You could run PTA in a matchup like this. I feel like Conqueror is more snowball. It'll allow me to kill multiple people. If I'm given the opportunity, and if I'm not given any opportunities, well, that's a shame. That's a shame, because PTA wouldn't really be creating any. We gotta play this very coy, Bob. We farm our camps, we show up to the play, and then we wait. We don't force nothing. So we'll see. Two points into the queue, let's keep farming our camps here. With the Raptors, you wanna clump them up like this, and then just keep spamming that Q. You don't even have to cast the W, it's not important. With that Q, get them low enough, and you just kite the last part of this out. I'll go ahead and do my red buff here since top lane is trading so heavily. Come on top lane. Go ahead and live man. <laughs> where the HP values are where they're at man. I just can't move to that. Ivern has done his three camp into top so we're already we already have the farm lead. No reason to make it go any further. Let's finish up the Krugs here and then get level four. And then we're free to go, then we can attack the mid and the top lane as much as we want. We have the sweeper this time too. You can imagine if Ivern moves around like he does early, he might play some wards, so we'll see if we're spotted. Because we have a lot of time to play with, we're not doing a farm max path, so we might have to wait for some waves to bounce. But we're not going to wait forever. We still have that Gromp coming up. So after I finish Scuttle here, looks like we're best suited to go for a mid gank. And we're gonna walk into Anivia here. This is the tricky part they don't tell you. And we're gonna use our E. And then we're just gonna keep walking into him. There's Ivern Q, so that's good. Eat that is fine. Q. Auto, 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 schmack. Okay. Oh! There's the flash out of Mr. Ivern. Let's go ahead and reset. So because Anivia and Ivern won't one-shot me on full HP, this is what they don't tell you. You can walk right into those guys, and it will be fine. Alrighty. Pickaxe, control ward, to the bot side we go. You want to use that E against this wall, because check it out, it goes all the way. And once Ivern spent his Q as well, it's like, nice, I'll be able to actually stay on top of you guys for once. So we approach with just moving, use E against that wall so we can follow where they're running away to. Finish off the kill. Alrighty, back to the camps here. We'll continue pathing towards the top side. Bot lane's not in a very gankable state. This would be the time to do it, but they are under turret, so not wasting any time there. My camps are up. Enemy, not in a gankable position right off the rip. No thank you. Because the faster we farm these camps, the faster we get level 5. As well as just get more farm and get to the top side once again. Got the Anivia's Flash there, I think. Whoa, Nelly, Anivia's letting it rip, eh? I'll be moving towards the mid lane here, but also hitting my camps. The next wave's coming in here, and this is the wave that the mid laners hit level 6, so it might be contentious. Top lane's happening as well, so if I enter the river, I at the very least give myself options. E, moving! Smite, W. Nice flash. The mystery is solved. We didn't get Anivia's flash. So now that we got her flash, that bad boy will be down until 10 minutes. This Camille's pretty low, so is the Ivern. So we'll head on top side. Use that sweeper. Now Camille's level 6, so... Not very easy to force a play, eh? Bully Ivern out of the position. That guy's level 4. Loser. Into the Void Grubs. Now, Camille hasn't bought any items yet, so she may TP back to lane. In which case, I don't want to get caught out on the Void Grubs here. So I'll start them, but I'm not married to them. Welp. 
That is gonna go that way. Run! I have a Gragas with no resources. Run! <laughs> Gragas, get out of there! You can't even cast a Q. It's far more camps, Bob. Scuttle Crab is all yours. Void Crubs are all yours. Why? Because you have a Camille that's level 6 that will kick my head off. And she went mid lane? Well, that will show me. Let's reset. Level 6. We got some items to buy here, too. Now, we have the option of Vamp Scepter or Recurve Bow. I really like Recurve Bow. I could do it like this. It's not... <laughs> I don't know, man. Vamp Scepter, like 15 AD. It's pretty good. I would really like to have attack speed on this turn, but it is what it is. With level 6, now we have more playmaking potential. This gives us our execute, so... Whenever we participate in those fights, it's going to be a whole lot easier to secure a kill and get a reset. Or we can pick someone up. The ulti also gives you an unstoppable dash, so if you find yourself in a bad spot, that'll be fine. You can get out of there. Which is super helpful when you're playing against so much CC like we are. Building towards Bork as our first item. I mentioned it in the prior videos, but Kraken Slayer just kind of sucks. <laughs> just kind of sucks as it don't deal enough damage. Blade of the Rune King, you never feel like you're really lacking anything. The only problem is that it's pretty expensive. At 3200. I'm gonna start up the dragon here. Both my mid lane and bot lane have Pryo. Very bold gank by Ivern here. Now we're gonna flank, but we're not gonna be super committed. Just helping my bot lane back off from the play. Remember, they have a ton of CC, so the enemy enacts to waste our time. My time will not be wasted. If you guys want the dragon, it's all yours. They just push my bot lane off the wave. So now they have the prio. So if I can test the dragon, I'm just spending my time looking at Ivern. It'd be as efficient for me to be looking at a tree right now and not even clicking Viego to the next camp. So since I can see that fast, I can farm my camps faster. And these will get me stronger and also get me closer to the Bork. We finish the Raptors here. Let's enter the river. This will put me in position for the respawned Scuttle Crab as well as the Void Grubs. Both of these bad boys still up, eh? Don't mind if I do. So as you can see, a whole lot of Viego's early moves here don't have to be focused on hitting the lanes, especially when you're just massively stonewalled by the champions themselves, and they're not making these egregious, ridiculous errors. But don't worry, gameplay is coming. 1400 for that Bork. Let's go ahead and stay in the river for now. This will give me an opportunity to attack mid lane or top lane, and if there's truly nothing here, then we can back off. Nice, Camille ease in, bounced around. E moving, auto, Q, bop up, W, bop up, bop, ulti. I hope if I have to. E, auto, Q, auto, W. Let's go ahead and back off here. Run! Run! Moving. A pretty easy dodge on that Q. Anivia, do you even want to hit me? Be honest. Do you really want to hit me? Nice! And since we got the kill, farming these camps, I'll have just enough gold for the Bork. So because I enter the river rather than just defaultly going back to the camps entirely, it gives me an opportunity, and this time, Camille goes in. If you're not in that river, you're not going to be able to walk from red buff to that fight as it's happening. But Sawyer, how do I know when those fights are going to happen? Go back. And watch when I finish the raptors. Or not the raptors, the void grubs. It's right there, Bob. Jinx says, yo, can I get one gank or something? Classic. Hey man, I just won the game topside. Yeah, but I died 2v2. Was Ivern there? No, but you should gank my lane. Write that down. Anyways, we complete the Blade of the Rune King. 55 AD. 30% attack speed. 
10% life steal. And then the passive Mist Edge that gives us more current HP physical damage on hit damage, which our Q already does. Our bot lane's nothing special right now, so we'll continue to clear. With all this clearing, we got 83 CS. And we want to keep that going. Now we're Mr. Ivern's playing on the bot side. There's really nothing for me down there. I will just continue to clear. Especially when our ulti's down, it's very efficient to be farming. It's about the time that this bad boy will come back up. We'll be in the river and in a good spot to fight. With our level and item advantage. Bomba. Oh, she barely lives. Control ward, and let's try to finish the Camille here. Sweeper, moving. Use the E now. And a little bit of WQ. Oh! Well, she's not over here, and she's not over there. She's either in the jungle, or all the way gone. Damn. I can cross through mid. It's fine. It's fine. It's just... Hey. Maybe it's not fine. The enemy ADC, not coming. Okay. Use our E. Get, get there sooner rather than later. I'm looking to nail the Anivia here. W, Q, ulti. Nice. Because Ivern's not really a champion. Schmack. That was a mass. I mean, if the Anivia. If the enemy Anivia is on my wolf camp, you know, she's gone too deep. Dragons in 55 seconds, and those Void Grubs are coming up too. I'd rather just play on the bot side if I'm being honest. For once, we don't have a jungle issue, so... We could try to rough him up here. I got my Bork. You guys are reaching as far as one can go. There we go. W. Flash. Stun. Q. Up, up, up. Come on, Betsy. Slow him. Zillion. Zillion, slow him. W. Run. Smack. There you go. W. Up, up, Q. Up. Ay, Dios. Ay, Dios. At least Ivern gets the shutdown, but like... Figured we get a stun or a speed up. I figured, you know, Zillion might do something. Big mistake. Big mistake. Give me Merc Treads quick. Merc Treads gives us magic resist and 30% tenacity. God bless. From here, we can go a couple items. Black Cleaver is good. Trinity is good. They're all squishy champions, so Trinity is going to be our go-to. Since we lost that bot play, that means that we lose the dragon. So for now, I'll play for the top side. Skipping the camps. Moving into Ivern's blue side. Because if he's down there, he wasn't farming his camps. He only has 82 CS. What the hell is the support doing top lane? Let's try to find this guy. Hello. E, moving. Schmack Q. Sch Schmack. Any allies right here? W. Run. Get in there! Q! Get in there! Uh, hit a champion! Let's see it, boys. Okay. <laughs> the most pathetic skirmish of all time, question mark? You know what they say, keep gambling. W. Schmack, schmack, Q, schmack, schmack. Oh, nope. Onto Milio. Smite. Auto, Q. Pop, up, pop. You know what they say, keep gambling. Auto. That's right, I have the bounty ball for you. Alrighty. Let's play ball in the dragon. You fellas want to play like this, you're going to have to keep contending. So what we're doing here is we push the pace. We ask the enemy, do you want to fight us? Why? Because I'm strong. And it makes them play ball, and if they do not interact, then they're naturally losing stuff here. Job's done. Back to the camps. If a fight happens now, we can always react. But we did our play. We chased the enemy all the way from top side to bot side and got the dragon. Is that enough for you, teammates? Ugh, can I get one gank? What are you doing? Listen, even though Gragas is doing that bot side... I'm going to continue to clear. I have this sequence to get level 11 and a bunch of components, and I won't be stopped, won't be moved. And also, the enemy just really doesn't have any counter to this. 
They don't have any counter to it. Let's go ahead and start Rift Thrill. Well, it's a one for two so far. Alrighty, it's a one for three. We get mid turret. The move by Gragas is just too much, that's the thing. That's a bad play because it's over force and everyone wasn't involved. I really don't want to move down there because I'd be gambling my farm, gambling if the fight's going to work, gambling my time. With no ulti? Nah. So, as everyone's respawning here, we'll clean up all the camps and then reset, saving the red buff for last so that we can have it for longer. Our next goal is going to be kind of just try our best in the team fights because now the mid game's commenced with these turrets going down both mid lane and in our case bot lane. So whenever the mid game commences, you want to have control over one side of the jungle, mostly one side of the river, and then try to play for that side of the map. Phage, two long swords, off we go. So we're going to play for the bot side. It's much better to protect Jinx, play with Jinx, than it is to do it with Gragas. But this is already happening. You know, at the end of the day, we could just push mid too. Benivia is not going to stay bot lane. Here's what we'll do. Try to cut off Anivia, moving back to mid lane. Control ward right here. Auto Q, pop up W, pop up, pop, pop Q, pop up. Goodbye. You are control maze. You are not allowed to move from bot lane to mid lane. Not without identification. Not without recognition. Not without a letter. What is my team doing though? Gragas is dead top. All right, that's fine. Jinx walked from like bot side to top to die. And Zillion is dead too. You know you guys could just push and farm a lane. That's what they don't tell noobs. You can just stay in your lane and push and farm. Jinx had a whole turret to take down here. She pushed one wave and Nivia showed up and she just fucking left. He who seeks is always wondering. Expending a lot of resources. He who lets things come to him. Doesn't spend as many. Auto Q. So long as I don't get hit by that stun, we're fine now. I really need to complete the whole trinity before we reset. So, that's our turn for the plays. We did kill the Anivia, that's good, but our team keeps keeps running it. So at the end of the day, it makes it even. What's super important right now is that I stay true to this path, not interrupting it. If I get my camps here, then I guaranteed get trinity, and I guarantee have a lot of XP, and that'll put me in a good spot mid-game here. Being ahead of the enemy soul lanes in XP is a really good spot to be. Alrighty, let's reset. Level 13, check. Level 13 gives us our E max. It's more movement speed and attack speed. And we get that Trinity Force control ward. And let's go team fight, brother. Trinity Force, 45 AD, 33% attack speed, 300 HP, 20 ability haste. And a spell blade passive. We also get movement speed when we hit him. That's pretty good. That's just a whole bunch of extra stuff, Bob. Whole lot of what we already do just accelerated. Very much a mid-game spike item against squishy targets. Helps you stay on them. Helps you deal damage to them. Now, we're going to try to burst this dragon here since these fellas ain't in position. Wish me luck because my team's a bunch of ding-dongs that don't know how to choose this for that. Job's done. Get the reset. Jinx gets the excited. Q, moving. Auto, auto, ulti. Oh, very close. Now, I kind of freaked it on the flash there, but it's fine. Q, bop, bop. Become the bird. Q. E. Smite. Come on. Come on. Bob. Bob is becoming a real tragedy here. 
Oh. No, they get barren. I can't believe that Anivia lives. The healing and shielding is becoming too much. One thing's for sure. We're going to have to get anti-heal. To buy a Serpent's Fang is a bit much, though. Welp, you know, if you look at the tab screen, we're doing pretty good, all things considered. 1 and 4 top lane, 0, 2, 3, 5, 1 and 3. It just sucks where we die and then they get the Baron, because if I could be farming right now, that would be not as bad. But since literally everyone dies, they're going to get the Baron. So now with the Baron, the onus is on them to push a lane. Oh my god, and they just barely live. To push a lane and then actually capitalize on it. So in the meantime, we kill the camps and then if they push, then I can try to flank them. You also want to keep an eye on where your team is grouped up in a spot like this. Don't push mid, guys. The Bork clear speed is pretty nice. Comboed with that spell blade from Trinity also. So far Bork has dealt 1700. Alright, so it's up to them to siege. It's also up to them to invade me, so... Until they get into my jungle, we will be relentlessly farming. If you preemptively show up to positions to fight or whatever, it rarely works. Unless everyone's grouped up and on the same page. And also, you spend your time not farming. And then once the enemy pushes up with Baron, you're not going to be able to farm. They're going to take all of your camps. Or deny you entrance to the jungle. The enemy's not pushing here. They're looking to attack the Gragas, so I'll push top lane for now. And you may be asking, when do we group? I mean, Bob, they have all these Stonewall champions and... I have a bunch of losing allies. We may never group. Can you win that way? We'll check it out. I'm pulling in Anivia to, <laughs> to the fucking bot lane. Let's reset here. If Anivia is not mid lane, that's very good for us. Executioners, uh... No magic mantle's alright, but I'm gonna need some armor. Let's just get a longsword and a control ward. Let's figure this out. Executioners gives us the anti-heal. We'll see what I can get after that. What items I'll be blessed to have, because our first two items are somewhat guaranteed. As we're in a losing mid-game entering the late game here, then the farm is not as guaranteed. Sweeper and moving. Now my team's not in position just yet, but I'm in a good spot that's not thwarted as well. E, moving. On to Ash. W. Nice flash. That was anticlimactic. When the enemy is grouped up like this in the mid-game too, it's nothing special. Camille and Ivern in my blue side. I don't have a blue side no more. Comp very much sucks right here. Yes, Camille shows. That means we can face check bushes without instantly dying. Oh, this bad boy out. It'd be nice to have some wards now, wouldn't it? Only using our Q and autos here. Just like last time, staying on the dragon until we have a better reason.
Oh, my team is so hard winning. Ulti over the wall. E to get behind them. W. Schmack, schmack, Q. Schmack, schmack, schmack. Sir. Ivern's like, hey, 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 run for your life. Finally, a good fight. Now that one works out so well because my team doesn't fully commit and their team was in a choke. They all run into Hue, Gragas, and Jinx AoE. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything to the enemy champions and I won. Write that down. The main deal there is that I'm focusing the dragon until I have a better reason not to. If I was a little bit more interested in the fight, maybe I could have got some kills, but it wouldn't have changed much. Let's reset and spend our gold. Oh, the next item to get, man. Now that one's tricky. Oh, W. Bop, up, Q, E, moving, bop, moving, bop, bop. Bop, 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 Q. Okay. Playing it pretty slow, just staying on top of them. Auto, Q, E, smack. Still 20 seconds on the Baron. Might as well stay. Die! Yes. E. Ulti. Ult. W. Moving. E. We do not have to kite into them, guys. Nice. Baron time. Well, that's a random win. So for all of our farming in the mid-game, Bob, this is one of the reasons we do it. So that we're simply strong. To win the early game isn't super important, but to be strong in the mid game is because when you end up in these spots, you can contend with the enemy. It doesn't have to be do or die. In this case, they keep making this mistake of frontlining and not grouping up and walking into us, so. We're getting pretty lucky on that front, sure, but what was in our control was getting that farm and getting ourselves strong, and this is the uh, kind of double reward for it. When our team wins, it's extra good, and when your team loses, it's not as bad. Give everyone red buff reset. What the hell am I buying? You got me, man. I'm thinking GA. That sounds pretty good. BF sword. A little bit of armor from the steel sigil. So we get about 55 AD, 30 armor. So far the anti-heal has reduced 300 healing. It's okay. And now with Baron buff, my team wants to push. So we want to take those outer turrets. So bot lane looks pretty easy. We're coming near the end of the rope of our build as well, so it's time to start spiking and then actually playing to progress the game. Level 17, we only have one more level to go. And once we complete our third item here, the fourth item won't give us too much. Pushing. They do have a Nivea's wall, sure. So, until we have a bigger wave, I can't hit. Nice, stun. Schmack, schmack, W. Schmack, schmack. Bomba. We're trying to split push, but I'm not going to be the one to stop that. We need to push multiple lanes, I think. Against Anivia and Ash, they have adequate wave clear. Fair enough, these minions. Then we have another wave coming. Is everyone but Anivia showing? The dragon coming up, I'm not fully committing to anything here. Playing it low and slow. I've learned from my mistakes recently on Viego games where I try to be too far up, really challenging the enemy. And my allies are guaranteed always too far back, so... Now monkey see, monkey do. You too far back, so am I. Let's all do nothing. Engage on the Gragas. They're not going to commit despite dragon coming up. Amazing. We'll just take the free dragon. Because you know, my team's doing nothing, their team's doing nothing, and then we naturally win. Awesome. The real North American special. And you know they're clicking no on the forfeit, though. That 
gives us Ocean Soul. Baron buff is done, so it's going to be more important that I'm grouped up with my team, because once a fight starts, we want to be there. Right now, they're pushing mid, so I'll be in the sidelines here. So long that they stay on the map, so do I, although I have the Guardian Angel in base. It's better if I play like this, because it gives the enemy no options to engage. Just like this, Bob. E and flank. My Q, auto, auto, W, ulti, W away. Oh, sorty, sorty. Hit that turret quick, boys. Smack, 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 W, flash, pop up, Q, pop up, pop, 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 bing, bang, smack. Come on, Ash, walk on up. Push, push, push. They just barely show mid lane, Bob, and I get that flank off. Why? Because I'm in position. Two minions, that's all we need. Now we need to wait for the next wave here, but we can end the game for sure. They're sustained from the Ocean Dragon Soul, and they only have two people left. We are good to go. Nice, there's the interrupt as well. I'm just kiting out the Ash here. She has to stop me from hitting the Nexus. GG, final score, 5, 2, and 4, with Bork dealing 3,000, almost double of what Kraken Slayer would have dealt, and Trinity dealing 700. Not bad. Nothing. Sort of team comp. Adios. Absolutely nothing. I'll put Mr. Crab here at Master Tier. Don't ask me about the Lever Buster. Final damage dealt, 18,000. With Conqueror healing us 400 and Coop dealing 500. Yeah, the Kraken Slayer is not very much the juice. We know this. And then your options after the Blade of the Rune King. So you have Bork. And then if into tanks, you can go Black Cleaver Wits. Into squishy targets, you can go Trinity into Death Dance. Trinity into GA. You can go Trinity into Black Cleaver. So, But the main deal is that Trinity. The Trinity Force is going to help you stay on top of them. Deal damage and take damage. The trifecta. All right.